Welcome back to Beta Idol. In this video, we are going to continue our series and we will be covering lobbies and sessions. So there are two different things that come under EOS and the two things are lobbies and sessions. So to create lobbies, you use the create EIK lobby node and to create session, you use the session node. But what's the difference between them? The difference is very basic. Basically, lobbies are much more managed uh, sessions. So consider both to be the same thing where lobbies is automatically managed. Basically, if a player comes in, that would be registered automatically. If a player goes out, that will be registered automatically. All the players have a WebSocket connection uh, at all times with the host. Now, um, we don't know, we do not need to go in depth on how these things work, but from a game developer's perspective, both of them are the same thing, but lobbies can only be used for listen servers. That is, if you have player hosted servers, then only you can use lobbies and sessions can only be used for dedicated servers and player like that can be used for both of them. But with sessions, that is this create EIK session, it will create a session which you have to manage. When a player comes in, you need to tell EOS that, ha, huh, this player came in. You need to do all the hard work for it. Like it's not a hard work. It's just registering and registering player and updating the backend on that player's uh, status whereas in a lobby that is done automatically you do not need to worry about that so uh, normally i would suggest for all p2p or listen servers uh, you should be using lobbies and you should only go to sessions for dedicated servers and that's what i'm going to assume you are going to follow but if you get any issues with p2p with sessions let us know on discord and we would be more than happy to help you out but there won't be any issues uh, of course so in this tutorial, we would be starting with the lobbies setup. So let's go and create a widget pretty quick. Now this widget would be to make lobby session to log in the user so that we can test it on the same machine. If you know, we can test EOS sessions on a same machine. So we will have, we can like, if we can, we will do it, right? So let's create a widget pretty quick. Now what I'm doing here is I created an empty widget and I set the play like the input mode to UI only. I will add four or five buttons. So this is just some demo UI and that's why I'm fast forwarding to. For the two buttons, I just added the two login methods that we followed in the last video. Now comes the main function that is the create lobby function. So let me call the create EIK lobby and then I will explain the different options available with the uh, node. So the first one that you see is the session name, which is basically a local uh, property that would be present and it is also a multiplayer property. Now this session settings is a uh, important thing. You can use these settings to find sessions, specific sessions, and uh, you can access them in the game. So your game mode and things like that can go there. Now you have some extra settings, which are basically, is it a LAN match? If it is a LAN match, you can allow a LAN match. Now it's supported pretty good. And there are different things like lobby ID you get when you create. Now in this create lobby settings, one thing that I wanted to show is or maybe we will talk about this um, should advertise and these private connections should be set to null like if you have to set presence you can show that if you have support for host migration we will also be covering that in later part of the video so uh, these things we would cover in depth in the later part now you can use this lobby id that you get and you can find sessions by this lobby id and you can override it here so this is the place where you can override, but it should be less like more than four letters and not less than that. It's a unique value, right? So it's better you leave it to default. Now in the let's compile and let's leave it like this. Let's drag 
create so you see the session settings uh, you can find using that that I don't know what I was showing but yeah here we will get execute console command and we will pass in the server travel command which is for our level that we are going to open copy path I just need the level name uh, so yes yeah, server travel map question mark listen now when this is done that is that should be working and go back and in the find and join lobby you can open up this open this up and eik session so we can find the eik session using this and then join it so we will just get if the index is valid or not if the index is valid that means the first session is valid and if it is valid we will join it now you can see we are using the lobby session and not matchmaking session so we will just join it join session now this session name can be a different value than the original one that you entered but it's better if you uh, leave it to be the same for the purpose of uniformity now when this is done you should be joining successfully but as you see we are uh, okay so the there should be a empty map name map value passed here so as soon as we find the sessions we will check if the first session is valid or not and if it is valid we will just join it so let's try it out that let's quickly add this level um, add a new level and add the widget on the screen when the level starts and one more thing that we need to do is basically the controller as of now if you remember in the start of the videos we set the input mode to game only we need to revert it back uh, sorry we set it to ui only so in our character blueprint we need to revert it back so that after the game starts we need to get the control access back so we can move our mouse and move our character or else we will not be able to move our character this is a common request that comes why i am not able to move my character and that's why i thought to show this thing as well so set input mode to ui uh, sorry game only and that should do it let's go and try it out now make sure your settings is okay so let's open up the main menu this is set to two players standalone and we need to play as a standalone game to test in the editor so let it launch or oh, two minor things we forgot is we need to remove the login code that we did for the first video and on the login widget we need to add a display name for the device id method because or else the login will fail so now let's play let it come up uh, yeah so both the screens i will put them side by side okay login with device id in one so i i can see the logs on the second screen and i can see the logged in we, later we, we can add a button or text on top with the id of the user so we can see the users are logged in and with one of the users i will just create a lobby okay lobby created i am in the lobby i can able to move and here i will press find and join so we should be joining the first session which is the same now you see this lag but it's not a lag where it's just losing control and if i press spacebar you see it becomes normal so it's not a lag but more of uh, windows losing control over the window and then loading it and making it look late i think there's some setting in windows uh if you don't want that you want to give full power to both the engines but but i don't remember where it is i think it's some battery setting full power something like that but yeah that is for some another day <laughs> okay so now let's go back and add a text so we can show on top that which id we are logged in with i am going to bind it to a text but it's not required for you you can just update it once and that uh, that is it but i will be binding it so as soon as i log in it automatically takes it so get the player controller check if the id is valid or not and then get the product id because product id is always valid for both the connect and auth interface whereas the epic id is, is only valid for auth interface logins so if the id is not valid we will just say the auth like the i not logged in that means the player is not logged in so that should be it now let's try this out 
okay so now if i press login with device id you see the id came up and the same will happen if i press on login with persistent auth and you see both the ids are different and logging in the way that we wanted to do so that is it now let's move on to the next thing that is host migration because that is a commonly asked thing so let's cover that too so to set up the host migration i usually suggest people so before let me show what happens if you exit no i think that will not work because the default level is set to third person so you will not be able to see the effect let me do one thing so in the product setting goes to map go to map and modes and make the default level to be the main menu so what happens is if the there is a network disconnect right you will be thrown back to the main menu which is what in the most games will do and this will also happen when the host leaves the game so let me log in with persistent auth and device id create lobby now in the current case what happens is when the host leaves the session is automatically destroyed because we are not supporting host migration at this point like we have not set it up so that it supports it so if the host just leaves out you get thrown back to the main menu now we need to support host migration so the process is pretty simple for that we need to create a game instance firstly this is required so at any point of the game you do not need to do it for different levels just once so add a delay now this delay is only required so that the engine has enough time to load everything up then call the on host migrated and add a custom event on host con migrated yeah and here add a branch now if this is true that means this local player is the host the new host and if it is false then that means the local player has is just a joiner so has to join the new level so that is what we are going to do so for instance here copy this oh no i should not have cut but just copied so paste it here so if this is true that means we are the host and we have to server travel and then here in extra settings let's drag from extra uh, extra settings and we need to make sure that the host migration is turned on so if this is turned on when the player leaves the session will not be destroyed oh sorry we also need to server travel one sec here we will just add the same node that we added there there's a server traveling node now this is just this just takes you to the level and starts a p2p connection so that players can join your level now if i press on login with device id and login with persistent dot create a lobby and then find lobby and join it may take a minute why is it not working did i do something wrong oh okay so i i made a mistake okay so what happens is basically let me explain here so uh, the last session before showing you all we created a session and it is still hanging so the thing that happens is basically we are trying to join the first session but that session may not even have a host so what we are going to join is a empty session so for uh, for cases like this what we do is we check if the current number of registered players in the session is greater than 0 and if it is then only we join the session so what this does is we do not join any hanging or leftover session and that leftover session automatically automatically gets destroyed after 13 minutes or so now this is required for host migration because host migration sessions cannot be uh, disqualified from here i mean they can be but uh, you need to find them right so let's now test and now we will only join the server that we create now which has a one registered player now this is it let's find and join you see on the left when this mouse control gets lost it starts lagging a bit i'm not sure why that it is but yeah you see now oh okay let's give it a few seconds okay it took a bit of time and i will not deny that fact but uh, ideally it is under 3 seconds i i i am pretty sure it's because i lost the control of my mouse and it took that long but it should be under 3 seconds now um, i know 3 seconds is a lot 
time but you uh, seamless host migration is not possible sadly in unreal engine of like it is possible but with if you know how to edit the engine and stuff like that um i think photon has a um, uh engine version where you can do that but not with eos or eik and stuff like this right not even with any plugin from the marketplace any plugin that you see is doing something in the back end to save everything and then have a load time uh, and with the multiplayer yeah, it's it's going to be a lot so you can find these lobbies with the lobby id player id which you saw and we can even add custom data now you the default value search keywords no longer works and i can show you here earlier it used to work because eik supported it but it no longer works so what you need to do is either you can search by the session name that is this uh, game session or you can just quickly make a rand make a empty uh, sorry uh, make a map and have a custom value now why i'm doing this is to show you how to update a session when the session has already started and that's why i'm going to just add a new value let's name this and let's make it two players and fire play login with device id create lobby now if i go on my session and copy this prop key value and paste it here and find you will see i find my lobby and it has one registered player all the values are exactly as we entered the game session name is also present so you can even search it by the session name as i said now uh, if our second player joins you will be seeing it here invites are valid so whatever you set it on the uh, while create creating so if i join with my second player so you see it logged in find and join lobby the id ends with 974 as you can see i joined now let's refresh because it it does not auto refresh and you can see 974 it's there so we joined successfully right updates pretty quick i think the update time is two seconds or something so it's pretty less now let's uh, update the session during runtime we can do that so let's go and do that thing so I'm going to add a 10 key or 9 key. What, what you can, oh, sorry, the 10 key does not exist. Okay, so we will just add a key for 9 and we will check if we are the local server. So local server is the player that is hosting the session. So if I am the server, I can update the session. Only the uh, host can update the session. So I am going to update this value that we added here. So we are going to update it to something like, hey, updated value, this value is updated or something like that updated value and you also see the number of private connections is set to 10 and public is also 10 so the new count should become 20 after updating so let's play and see that if that happens so it's not a rocket science thing it's pretty easy to update a session so uh, login create lobby and if we go on the portal this is the old session find you see the hangover session and here it says okay so 10 is the number of public session and 0 is the private session connections and this value is custom value now let's go and press 9 i pressed 9 as you would have seen my mouse and if i go here now this becomes 10 public and private and the value is updated value so the update also works and that is it for this video Hope you liked it and uh, I will just join before I go. And I joined it successfully. That is it for this video. Meet you in the next one. Bye.